And it says this, starting in verse 12 of chapter Matthew 21. Jesus entered the temple. He drove out all those who were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables and the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. Jesus was ticked. I mean, he's not angry that often. I don't know if you read much of the Gospels. This is serious. This is big time anger, righteous anger, of course, because he couldn't be anything but righteous. So this is righteous anger. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, and you are making it a robber's den. In the uh, Luke passage, it says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all the nations, repeating the prophecy of Isaiah. And he said, you made it a robber's den. And he cleanses the temple. He literally turns the tables up, throws out all these people who are taking advantage of the worshipers who are coming to bring their sacrifice. And, and they're, he, they're, they're charging extraordinary, extraordinary amounts of money for them to bring their sacrifice. And Jesus is like, no, this house is my father's house. And it's for all peoples. It's to be a place of invitation and grace and mercy, not of usury, manipulation, and worldliness. And he gets t- and he, he drives everybody out and there's this little verse, the next verse, 14, and it says, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and were healed. I think people miss that. We talk about the passion of Jesus to get worldliness out of the church and, and, and to establish it as a house of prayer. But it says as soon as he did, what happened? The blind and the lame could be healed. You guys, when we get the trash out of our lives, when we clear out our personal homes, when we clear out our space in our little business, when we make holy altars of worship, intercession, love, and honor to God, when we pray your kingdom come, your will be done in my heart, in my marriage, in my home, in my life group, in my business, in my workplace, and in the nations, we begin to experience the power of God to heal the lame and the blind. And it is paramount as God's people that we are those people because we literally, whether you feel like it or not, we house the presence of God. The Bible says we're the temple of God. And if I'm not alive, there's no life in that space. The enemy is ruling and reigning unless my cubicle is lit up in the spirit because I'm present and I'm prayerful and I'm allowing the grace of God to rule and reign. That's why we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in my cubicle, in my office, and Lord, in the nations today, among our people who serve around the world, and every time we do, God comes in answer to those prayers because they are his will. Not only his will, it's what we're made for. 